Good morning, good afternoon. Gentlemen, as always, it's good to be with you and everybody else who's with us from around the world and particularly in the Middle East, it is good to be with you. I'm Graham Moore, putting my hand up. I confess it's me. Um, and also with me, as always, Mohammed Shukri in Bahrain and Phoebe Francis yes, me. in Dubai. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Um, we're, we're happy to identify ourselves. We we, we we don't mind if people know who we are. And we always bring, hopefully, some information that is valuable to people who are tuning in, either on our website channel or our YouTube channel or on our podcast. We, if those of you who are listening, we, the three of us, are passionate about leadership. Am I right, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. It, yeah. might, it might be said that we are wanting to change the world one leader at a time. We don't mind. We are determined to get better leaders in this world because leaders make a difference. So, gentlemen, I hope that we've always talked about some interesting topics. I want to suggest today that we talk about one that quite often people steer away from, I think. Correct me if you think I'm wrong. But this is, in some cases, the what we might refer to as the elephant in the room. No, I know there's no elephants in the Middle East. There's camels, so we might say it's the camel in the room. You, you know what I mean by that, that it's something that is, exists, but we don't talk about it, right? You understand yeah. what I'm suggesting. So today, shall we talk about leaders and workplace politics? Interesting. Summit, how does that sound to you? What does that mean when you hear those words? Yeah, as you said, uh, politics is something people steer away from or deeply dive in if it's on the other side of the screen <laughs> uh, following all these uh, news. But when you go through uh, politics, maybe you cannot identify them as politics in the workplace, but they are. In fact, they come in different shapes and forms. And when it comes to a leader, it is going to be a bit more detrimental because politics usually make you focus on yourself and forget others. The reason you are a leader is to take care of others. But when you are deep and, and trapped into politics, all you got to do is to attack others and defend yourself. And, hey, you have a team to take care of. That's how poisonous politics at workplace are. Toxic even is a word that could be applied to this because it can grow. Collusion is another word that's kind of related to politics, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Phoebe, tell us about your reaction to politics that leaders have to deal with or are affected by. Yeah, one aspect which I just want to bring here is, you know, it... It, I see it around personal power and influence, and, and especially uh, in in this context, I want to refer politics in the work uh, workplace uh, from a point of view of seeing it as activities centered around uh, gaining personal power and influence. Now, there is one interesting aspect which we have to see here, that is when it targets individuals rather than uh, you know the organizational goals that becomes the you know that that marking of uh, politics moving into a territory of toxicity and it becomes more of self serving and in one way manipulative in the workplace and that is what I just want to bring in to the attention of our uh, viewers as well as the listeners. When, when, when is that um, barrier crossed? When is it becoming self-serving rather than serving the organization, the team where we are working together? When is it becoming manipulative where my interest is taken over the organizational interest? So that barrier of personal power and influence makes it uh, toxic in workplaces. And that is the 
camel in the room or that is the elephant in the room? <laughs> yeah, and sometimes not only in the room, but it 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 spreads. It yeah. it moves from the room and it goes to others because people talk, people collude. They do it on the quiet, don't they? Hey, I want to tell you about this person. I want to tell you about this what he's doing. Did you know that this is happening? This is collusion and this is poisonous. This is not what should be happening in an effective organisation where leadership is taking the, the organisation to the next level. So as we're talking about this, let us keep aware of the five practices of exemplary leadership because we often come back, whatever we're talking about, we say there's a link here to the five practices. Now, if I am living my values, am I going to be playing politics? Probably not. And if you see someone or detect that someone is playing politics, then we need to check in on the values. Before we take this too further, much further, though, I'm going to suggest that I believe that the, the energy that drives politics is ego, that people are feeling perhaps a little insecure and they want to try and go around a different way and influence and manipulate others for their own benefit. Is this effective? Is this the way, is this is it an environment where leaders can really be effective? How can they be effective when this exists? Gentlemen, your wise comments, please. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to make, pin a small reminder that uh, workplace politics is not something that only leaders are subjected to. Oh, sure. All right. And, uh, but because of the pyramid, and it gets tighter at the top. So it is more actually projected. Otherwise, all of us go through it because of that ego, because everybody has ego. But when the ego gets to a real threat, and th this is where it becomes really toxic and, and uh, elusive. And so really, if I hold to my values, okay, and usually values are the things that drive behaviors, I may go through politics. You cannot stop politics from happening, but you can stop them from, uh, stop yourself from reacting negatively because you choose the response uh, based on your values. So the more uh, uh, leaders are, stick to their values and honor them and live them all the time, when the, when the politics are a threat or something that they will have to react to, they will be wise on their reactions. Yes, very good. Phoebe. I want to reiterate one aspect. We cannot fully avoid politics in the workplace. That is something which we have to be aware of. And again, from building on the values part. Now, when you are understanding the values, as, as uh, from, from a, the leadership challenge perspective, we follow the values of uh, individuals and the uh, organization. But now you can sense yourself as a leader when I am deviating from that values, which, which is going to create that toxicity in the workplace. And, and again, I want to bring uh, one aspect because, um, you know, uh, we, we act on interests. Now, yes, we, we have interests of uh, our growth as well as organizational growth. Now, when that focus changes from organizational growth to my own growth in any way possible, that becomes the challenge. And that is where it becomes a political act which is going to be impacting the workforce and the work and we can sense it in in the workplace you know that is that is the beauty of <laughs> sense making individuals as leaders we can sense this is happening something is wrong 
Sure. What is that? How is that happening? And if we start looking into that in a careful manner, we, we can see that deviation happening. And, and this leads to, you know, gossiping, which happens in the workplace. And second is, we, 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 can, we, we can see subachers in the workplace. We can see bullying happening in the workplace. We can see, uh, you know, gaslighting happening in the workplace. All are uh, uh, things which the, in the workplace people start sensing. Yeah. So let's just reinforce the fact, as we always say, that leadership is everyone's business, right? So let's now, let me just look at two different areas where the politics can occur. Let's just say I am the most senior person leading a team. So I'm the team leader or the manager. So there possibly could be some politics arising within my team. That's one area, okay? And I would need to manage that. The other area where politics may arise is from the head of or manager of another team in the organisation. So we yes. are probably at the same level. And what's going through my mind is something happened quite a long time ago when I was in the corporate world and I had been promoted to, to take the role of leading a major project. And uh, when I was given this particular role, uh, I um, had thought I had everyone's support and confidence. And then it was some years later when I was appointed to an even more significant role that I had then access to a lot of more confidential information. And there I discovered in the file um, a, a what we called memo, or these days we might call it internal email, from a gentleman who was at my level, who was not speaking favourably about me at all in my appointment to this job. And he was kind of playing politics. But, <laughs> but I discovered this after the event, and I discovered it after I'd made that project a huge success. And uh, I was not influenced by what he did. It certainly didn't come back by anyone else wanting to do anything negatively towards me. But he was trying to play politics, and he was at my level. So how the two of those, let's have a look at some specifics about how a leader at, at that more senior level can deal with politics from others outside his team for the moment, outside his team? How could he deal with that? I was uh, thinking the same. Uh, usually politics, uh, if, if you are a leader leading your team, politics will not be between you and the people you lead. Uh, one, because the interests are actually on different uh, parts. So there is no conflict of interest etc but it's the other peers let us say and sometimes as phoebe said you are bullied by someone who is up there who is who to whom you uh, pose a threat so i am reminded by the early uh, episodes that we do a leader is not just a leader for the people he leads in the team only in my books i am a leader here no a leader a genuine leader actually practices leadership around everyone. He influences everyone. He listens to everyone. He is interested in the growth of everyone. If you establish that platform right from the beginning and you are interested in other people's growth, they will love to work with you and not fight you or bully you. So you might as well as a leader start right from the beginning and diffuse any spark for conflict or politics by actually practicing leadership around everyone and you prevent you prevent the politics when it comes or disasters in, in that in that case. So uh, referring back to our ep episodes, we talked a lot. And as you always say, uh, Graham, leadership is a relationship. It's not just a relationship between you and your team, but with everyone. And before Phoebe adds to that, I just make one small comment, and that is that other leaders at your same at the same level as you are going to be may well be envious of the results that you are getting. And because they're envious, 
guess what? They look for ways to undermine what you are doing. I'll park that comment and la let Phoebe continue where you were, Muhammad. Yeah, when, when Muhammad was highlighting that, uh, what what came, uh, came to my mind is, you know, uh, do what you say you will do. And that simple act, if you are saying something, do that. And it is as simple and we can, again, make it a better workplace where politics is not for used for my own advantage, but for keeping the organization and, as Mohammed mentioned, my team. And I, I remember a workplace where I was experiencing zero office politics where the person in that leadership position have brought his values, made it clear. He considers and communicate continuously. And he again, I come back to leadership challenge. He modeled the way. This is what we are going to do. And in that modeling process, everything is clear. There is no ambiguity coming up. There is, as, as again, I, I like to bring that uh, word Mohammed mentioned, leadership is a relationship. And he has created a relationship in which he highlights his value, which is transparency. Information is free flowing. Yeah. And there is no information holding. And one key aspect of uh, organizational politics is when information holding becomes the key act in the workplace. Now, if there is no information hoarding, there is level of transparency which help the people in the team know my leader is doing this and this is why. Why he is doing, what is the purpose of his acting like that? And it becomes clear. And that creates engagement. Yeah. And again, lead to the next part. Over to you, Graham. And as we say in, the, in the, the practice of enable others to act, leaders, give your power away. Give your power away. If you're giving your power away, if you're enabling others to act, how can you be playing politics? You can't. And here's one other point that's really important. Through the research of over 40 years, we know of the top four characteristics of admired leaders. The number one has always been number one in all the research around the world. Honesty. Now, if I'm playing politics, am I being honest? No. Those who are playing politics and wanting to manoeuvre and change things, they're not being honest. But where the leader is authentic, when the leader talks about his or her vulnerability, when the leader is honest, when he's inspiring, people around he or she are going to want to be with that leader and not with a person who's going to be deceptive, dishonest, manoeuvring, manipulating, politicking. They want to be with someone who is genuine, who recognises them for the good things that they do, who helps them grow and become even more effective in what they're doing. So politics has got to be stopped and the best way to do one of the best ways to do that is for the leader to be authentic, the leader to be honest. Muhammad. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that list, the top four uh, qualities of an admired leader. But we also know <laughs> that list is actually 20 qualities. There are 20 qualities yeah. that were shortlisted from hundreds yeah. Yeah. and by the leadership challenge uh, creators. And one of them, which comes to my mind, is called supportive. Supportive is also an admired quality. It's not the top rank, but many people like a supportive leader. Let us flip this and ask the leader, how supportive are you to your peers and the board, for example? Can yeah. you go and check on them and see which problem do they solve and volunteer to help them out? Maybe there is a a project they need to finish. Maybe they need something help with technicalities. Maybe they are stuck with an employee and they need your help. Just offer help. And if you offer help, 
be generous in doing that around you. What are you doing? You are making yourself someone who is admired and they want you to be around rather than push you away from the picture. They want you to be around. Those were your words, right? Yeah. <laughs> they want you to be there. Phoebe. Yeah, this link, this I want to link it to the second practice, you know, inspired the shared vision. Yeah. <laughs> and that is what happens when, 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 when people are around the person who is inspiring them to take action. And, and you know, what, what, what kind of influence, if we link influence to politics, it is positive influence. It is impacting change. It is motivating. And, and again, uh, as, as uh, Graham mentioned, you know, the integrity comes there. Openness comes there. And that make people to take action. And we have, we, we, we have seen in, in, in such spaces, employees thrive, organizations thrive. Because I can highlight what are the challenges which I am facing in my workplace. And there is a, a leader who is inspiring us to come, come to us with the challenges, to find a solution together, yeah. rather than keeping people in the dark with information uh, being flowing. Uh, for example, we, we can see the information flowing in those places and making and enabling people to act. So it's not my decision. It's not what I do. It's not what I want to achieve. It's not what I want for me. It's what I want for everybody. As a leader, I want that for everybody. I want everybody to feel included. The best leadership is inclusive. It's not about me. You know, I was just thinking we should maybe next time talk about what people wear sometimes under the guise of leadership. The guise, you know what I mean by the word guise? What's the word guise in Arabic? Uh, because we're talking to the Middle East. And the pretense, guys? the pretense of, of, of leadership. It's, it's, a, it's not correct, but they're claiming that it is, right? It's so, it's, it's, so sometimes people wear a mask of leadership, but they're not genuine. They're not honest. No. They will use the mask of leadership to get their own ends achieved. That's playing politics. The best leaders want their best for everybody. They are inclusive. It is not about me. It is not about me. It is about what we achieve as a team. But also, uh, can I jump and say, Graham, that it is not about me. The problem is that some companies at the top, their culture and their policies and the way things are, they make it about one person. I'll tell you how. For example, they encourage high productivity and by running some campaigns and contests like employee of the month or, or something like this, where the winner is just, the star is just a person, an individual. What happens when you announce in this month, this is the best supervisor in the whole de department? What happens? Everybody else feels bad, feels unfair because they didn't check every... They will have all sorts of feelings. So envy comes, politics comes. And I read one of the books where uh, it says, I am totally, the author says, I'm totally against the star of the month uh, uh, program. Instead, what we should do is make ideas compete, compete, not individuals. Yeah. By motivating, by encouraging, promoting individuals when we are killing all the other uh, uh, creativity and creating politics and envy. And sometimes when you say with politics there, it, it's about competitiveness. And it's about that deceptive side of competitiveness where I will do things without, you know, I'm going to show one face to the world, but really what's my inner face? That's a strange metaphor, I know, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> what 
am I really, what's really behind this mask and why am I doing it? Genuine leadership is about everybody. And it's not about nominating an employee of the month. The, bet, the, the, the upside of that is, though, that at least they are recognising good performance and they're, and they're saying, yep, this person did really well. And we know under uh, with the, with the, the sixth, fifth practice of exemplary leadership that we need to encourage the heart. We need to recognise what people have done without it being, though, a part of the, the organisation that can be, in some cases, a little bit more recognising one, recognising rather than recognising the sharing of ideas so this is, I'm sure, in many organisations, something that people have to deal with on a regular basis. And they don't feel comfortable in their position physically. Am I, have I still got this job because of what is happening around me, what people are manipulating and trying to do? This is not about comfortable or positive leadership, is it? And, and also uh, organizations, uh, Phoebe, just give me a second. Organizations should really be alert. We can see in front of us uh, good leaders leaving. We always say people don't leave the companies. They leave their managers. That was a good leader, expert leader, loyal and hardworking and productive. And because of that little piece of ego, we are allowing a big chunk of expertise to be lost by the company, that is something big and the company should value that risk, Phoebe. Yeah, to build on, I was just reading an article uh, in LinkedIn and in that um, it was a CEO highlighting that leadership, I feel lonely at the top, you know, I feel lonely at the top. We don't need to be lonely at the top. Who, who, who is saying that you should be lonely as a CEO? Of, of, you have a team with you. Be with the team. How often you are interacting with them? Yeah. What ways you are making decisions? And that is what I just want to highlight. You know, what values are you practicing? Are you practicing the organization value as it is being said? Now, if that happens, I am pretty sure that team will be with you, then you will not feel lonely. And in when you are feeling lonely, that means many informations are being held by you, which are not shared. When that happens, it is a situation where you are also being part of creating that political environment where the people who have pieces of information starts to play with that, with you. So I'm going to make a comment and, about a leader who says his leadership is lonely. And it's this. <laughs> How much trust does he have in the senior people who are with him? If he has trust, he's not going to be lonely. And trust is Absolutely. trust is paramount. Trust trumps everything else. That trust is so important. And if he's got the trust, there's not going to be any politics. If he's living his values, if, they, if they're living their values, there's not going to be any politics. We are all here for the vision that we have established for this company, and we are going to work together to achieve the best that we possibly can. One final comment before we wrap up. Yeah, uh, Graham, I, I just want to reiterate that this part, you know, which is, again, from the leadership challenge. Now, when that trust element is there, everyone will be in a process to challenge each other. Yeah. And that leads to better innovation, better yeah. products and services. Oh, because when we trust someone, we know that, we, as we've said before, when they have a different point of view to what we have, it's not personal. They're not attacking me because I've got a different view, but they are challenging me to think a bit differently so that we can get the best for the overall organisation. Yes. Mohammed. And that is the leadership challenge difference, you know, which encourages everyone's heart to act for that, yeah. team and together. Yeah, that, that's what I love about uh, our program, the leadership challenge. It's not only the five practices. If we go through all the uh, studies and researches being done for 40 plus years, 
like this, the qualities of an admired leader, the LPIs, all that, you can find a lot of richness in that the leaders, leadership challenge is not only giving you a model, it's actually a full uh, package of how to deal with their, every situation. One last uh, comment I would say to a leader, if you go through uh, the challenge of another challenge of politics and you are subjected to it and you are pulled naturally into that side uh, battle, don't forget the real job, the real mission that you have. Don't get drawn into meaningless and consuming and draining uh, 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 battles and focus on your team. Because we always say the best way to... Um, the best way to beat someone is to succeed yourself sure. and focus on yourself and prosper and flourish on the other side. And that's the best response to any attack or politics. But let me just make this quick point. When you're uh, when a, t an, a team, mem team leader, colleague of yours, both at the same level, right, and he succeeds or she spectacularly, what are you going to do? You're going to be the first to congratulate them. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. Yes. Gentlemen, as always, this has been an interesting discussion, and I hope others learn from this as well. We want you to learn. We want you to be better leaders, and you can talk to us. You can email us, graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at leadershipchallengemiddleeast.com, and I would be really happy to inter interact with you. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Have a great week ahead, all of you. Mohammed, Phoebe, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.